Hi everyone, thanks for watching. If you enjoy our shows, please like our videos and subscribe to our channel. And remember to hit the bell for notifications. And you can support us via PayPal, Patreon, Bitcoin, and through our website, ageoftruth.tv. Hello and welcome to this special edition of Age of Truth TV for the Awaken Weekend Denmark Conference taking place on the island Funen. I'm Lucas Alexander in Copenhagen, Denmark. It's the 4th of September 2020 and we are live today streaming in front of a live audience at the Awaken Weekend Conference with our two very special guests two very well-known pioneers and celebrated speakers within the truth community. Ole Damagard, the top expert on false flag attacks, the global elite power structure, hidden conspiracies and the JFK assassination. Sasha Stone, researcher, public speaker, creator and founder of the organizations Humanitat, New Earth Project, New Earth Haven and the International Tribunal for Natural Justice, focusing on crimes against humanity, human rights and child sex trafficking. Tonight, these two remarkable gentlemen will be debating the current world crisis due to the COVID-19 coronavirus and the global lockdowns of 2020 and what is really actually going on behind the scenes and what can be done. Activism, understanding the way ahead. What can people do? What can you do in order to create a better future for our world and our planet? Good afternoon from Copenhagen, Denmark. We are streaming live to the Awaken Weekend Conference on the island Funen in Denmark. And hello to a good friend of our show, Ole Damagard, joining us from his home on Costa del Sol in southern Spain. It's always a pleasure to welcome you on the show and it's great that you're here today to debate the current world situation with Sasha Stone. Thank you for being with us, Ola. Thank you for inviting me and thank you for blowing some smoke up my butt. It always feels nice, uh, especially coming from Denmark, my own hometown. So, Thank you. And our man on Bali, joining us from Indonesia, from his sanctuary, New Haven. It is the intriguing, the innovative, the creative, the direct and sharply spoken wordsmith. And dare I say, the fashion icon of the truth community, Sasha Stone in all his glory. It's wonderful to see you again, Sasha. Well, it, it, it beats being described as a Vatican agent and an Illuminati science. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay before, before we go, we go live, live, I'll just, I'll just do, do a little sound check, check here. here. And, um, and one more, Lucas, one more. Yes, another test. Hello, hello, can you hear me? <laughs> and can you hear me, guys, as well, Sasha yeah, and Ola? Perfectly, thank you. Are we on? Yes. Are we back online? We have incredible technical difficulties here, so uh, we wonder why. Certainly this is an explosive combination with these two amazing gentlemen that we have on online here today from Costa del Sol and Bali. 
and we of course have a lot of things to cover about what's going on in the world. This is, you know, a massive global hijack of the human mind and spirit, war on consciousness. The world has been captured by fear, angst, anxiety, separation and division between people, even families and friends because of this pandemic or plandemic. And Ola, we were just about um, we were asking you the first question because you've been exposing false flag attacks for more than 35 years and you're one of the top men in this field. So would you say that this COVID-19 pandemic, plandemic is a false flag attack to implement the new world order takeover as part of a UN Agenda 21, UN Agenda 2030, ultimately UN Agenda 2050 depopulation plan, a world government. Um, and was this planned all along? And if it was planned, for a long time. Why didn't we in the tr in the truth community, who's been talking about this for so many years, why didn't we know that they would do it through a so-called implementation of this pandemic or virus to a takeover in this way? Ola. Well, that was a multiple question, so I'll just take one at a time. I would say approximately 100% false flag, yep. Um, it has been planned for a long time. They've been testing out the same operation over and over again uh, through the swine flu. With the virus, I mean, the virus is a perfect weapon because it has no uh, respect for borders. It doesn't uh, care for languages, so they can use it they, without the, uh, even a political agenda being shown behind it as well because it's a virus and it just goes whoa, everywhere. But uh, this one absolutely uh, absolutely planned and staged. The thing, the beautiful thing of it is though, that it had had very extreme consequences in both directions, both for the dark forces, but also for beautiful things happening. So it's like, I really don't know. It, it's almost like a gladiator arena has opened up and you got uh, two forces fighting each other and we are sort of part of the game, but we're also watching it. Uh, so we're both down there doing it, but also watching it. And it's, between good and evil and light and dark and so it's how you how you want to see it because it's an, an incredible opportunity for the dark force to go new world order agenda on steroids here we come take over and end game or it's an absolute amazing uh, opportunity for us to transcend this incredibly mad situation we had before because what they say what we used to say call normal before the so-called lockdown, which by the way is a prison term, that what was normal was absolutely mad. I mean, the way the world was was going was mad. And it, we were going straight into our own destruction. And how, oh how, oh how, could we pull the handbrake? I mean, nobody could, uh, we couldn't even, uh, you know, uh, agree on what type of pizza to buy or, or you know, uh, be, make peace inside our own families. So how on earth could we persuade the whole world and earth to do the exact same thing? So in came this virus, which was an attack, yes, but also an incredible blessing because this standstill of everything has given Mother Earth an incredible chance to regain her power, you know, and start uh, cleaning the air and the water and nature is starting to <gasps> breathe in and, you know, so, and also families have suddenly had time to see, oh my God, who is that? Oh, it's you know, my teenage daughter. I haven't seen her since she was three because I've been working nonstop. Do you know, it's like, and TV dinners and all of this, suddenly people have come to a point where, whoa, was it really worth it, this rat race where, you know, just work, 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 that, 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 and and from birth to grave and boom, that was it. Sorry, your life, that was it. It just passed you. Now they come to a point where they've had time to sit down and just get a bit, uh, I'm sure, restless. And, and, and But after a while, this has come into a point of where the creativity has started and also where people have started to look at their own life and their relationships and reevaluate those. So I also think there's a beauty of the whole thing that for many years, 
the, the dark forces have been trying with false flag operations through such as uh, alleged mass shootings or alleged terror attacks, especially the mass shootings, to de-arm the population of the US, especially there, but also in other countries, to get the weapons away from the population, all built on the old Roman te template problem reaction solution. And now it's totally backfiring in their face because uh, the US population has, as far as I know, never been more heavily armed than now. They also have been trying to push us into smart cities, to into this grid uh, driven by 5G and all this smart uh, device. The real spelling is actually evil, should be the the correct spelling of these devices, push us into this place where they can control us totally. And so what has happened, as if what I'm being told is correct, then we have a mass immigration leaving the east and west coast of the US and other uh, places in the world as well, where people are leaving the cities, going out into nature, going back to balance going back to you know off grid and start to looking at ways to to feed themselves and and help each other and small community it's beautiful to watch so it's like what's going on i don't know but i know that this is absolutely backfiring right in their face which i can just sit in the background background and applaud and do my absolute best to be a major boil in the butt for them to stop the dark part of this agenda and then do everything i can to promote the good part of it, or the the light part of this agenda or a different agenda but but do you think it was planned years ago we've also seen Donald Trump on the on the Simpsons and we've seen a lot of things happening uh, well beforehand and there was the movie V for Vendetta and we also saw a, a, a virus spreading an outbreak in that film which was from I believe uh, 2005 but if it was planned a long time ago why didn't we know about it in the truth movement you've been exposing and even predicting false flag attacks for many years Ola just your thoughts on, on my question there it's in our face all the time. It's just that we are too to fed full up with fluoride and and too, you know, up in our own world, uh, too worried about our finances or debts or whatever. So we don't look at it because they're telling us all of the time. They're showing up. They're pushing our face into it because they need our consent. If we don't give our consent by being quiet. That is the way they interpret our consent as well. If we don't stand up and say, no way, absolutely no way, they will turn it around to a yes. And so these things have been planned for, if it's 2005, it's been going on a lot longer than that. And and they're just like, it's uh, it's like a chess player. You know, you've got different agendas, different uh, plans of action. If that doesn't work, okay, we take plan two. two. And A, B, C, if, if the virus doesn't work, okay, we hit them with that, or we hit them with that, or we hit them with that. But the thing is, it's falling apart for them now. It's, I, I am, you know, I'm just sitting like, ah, in the background, because they, these poor buggers, cannot keep it together anymore. They've had this dark empire that they've been able to rule us through without us even understanding what's been going on for so many years. And now, we are at a point where millions of people, I would suggest every single day, is becoming aware. This awake word I don't like, but becoming aware of what's going on and also finding out how few they really are. So it's like a beautiful body that looks really healthy and now it has been diagnosed with a cancer growth and this cancer growth needs to ex be exposed, otherwise the body will die. So we are in an acute situation, There's, you can't avoid it, you can't stick your head in the sand and say, well, I'm going to watch X Factor instead of this, I don't care. You're going down, we're going down if we do not ch make a no different choice and stand up, hopefully totally non-violent, but absolute fearless and just say, absolutely no way am I accepting this anymore. And then learn to say yes to all the good stuff instead. You know, so it's uh, make your yes and your no strong. So, Sasha, we are seeing people all over the world practically surrendering and worshipping their governments, being totally dependent on the state, believing the official narrative of what the politicians, the health authorities and the mainstream media is telling them, almost as if dark invading entities 
has been ritually inducted into this earthly realm surrounding the planet, having a feast feeding on human beings' emotions, empathy, angst, fear, anxiety, you name it. Do you think that this is a black magic ritual, satanic ritual created by the New World Order elitists? Suggest that um, we are coming uh, through the to the end of a tunnel of an orchestration of generational civilizational uh, black magic and Saturnian, uh, satanic, Luciferian blood ritualism. Uh, government itself is an is a, a state of satanic. It's a satanic principle. It is. It means uh, mind control. It's the meaning of the word etymologically. Um, you know, we've, we've, we've been through a psychological operation since the Caesars of Rome 2,000 years ago. We've been in a planetary psychological operation since the cult of Sekhmet in the time of the Egyptians and the Sumerians, the Phoenicians, the black nobility. This has gone on for thousands of years, arguably for 12, 13,000 years since the great deluge uh, did a planetary reset uh, the last time uh, that audit occurred of the sum total frequency value of the planet. In 2012, we moved into another audit with a photon band, a cloud of vibral light as we moved into the ecliptic of the galaxy as a planet, as a solar system. And that audit was done in 2012, 21st of December. Here we are one cycle later in 2020. And yes, we've reached the culmination of the orchestra of chaos, uh, of pandemonium. But, uh, and yes, it's all predicated on blood cult, which is black magic. It's the ritualistic aspect of blood cult. But it is vital if we are to awaken within this dream spell, this orchestration of pandemonium, it is vital that we recognize one single factor. And that is that every single thing that is manifesting in the field is directly connected to the unresolved aspects of ourselves. So, when you understand that we are the living technology between the dielectric universe and the paramagnetic earth and all the telluric realms, we are the living technology. We have the capacitance to carry divinity and patterns of perfection into this 3D realm, to anchor perfection and paradise here. We are the ones who have consistently surrendered our capacity to anchor patterns of perfection. We are the ones who have uh, given ourselves over to the false light worship of monotheistic religiosity and of government, which is also a form of religiosity, as you suggested at the beginning. So it is entirely right and proper that we are brought to the end of days, the apocalypse, the falling away of the mask, which is what the apocalypse means. But are we going to be courageous enough and actualized enough to recognize that all that is happening to us is not us being a victim of circumstance or a victim of the government or a victim of Yaldabaoth. We are the orchestrators of the pandemonium. And until we, you and I, Lucas Ole, until we actualize internally, resolve all of those unresolved archetypes within us and then project into the field that equanimity, that serendipity, that poise, that grace of God, then we will continue to witness cycles of dystopia, cycles of dysfunction. And more than that, we will continue to surrender our life force into the field, allowing the accreted values of that life force to be utilized by lower elemental and lower astral intelligences that will continue to harvest us and come back at us as the angry gods, as the demonic and the diabolical realms that come back in and then inform a new cycle of blood cult, a new cycle of black magic, as you put it. We are the progenitors of the Alpha and the Omega. And this great pandemic, this great orchestration, which comes at us as a direct gift from the Jesuitical traditions of hundreds of years ago, snaking its way through the crowns of Europe, snaking its way to the uh, Dutch East India Company and the British East India Company and the imperial 
political flags of Belgium, of Holland, of uh, England, of Portugal, of Spain, the conquest of the black skin, the brown skins, the yellow skins, the red skins, the conquest of the pagans and the Saracens, all of that happening under papal decree, under the flag of empire. We were the ones who were worshiping at the flag of empire. We were the fuel that manifested the all. And we are now, all of us, incarnated at this time to resolve all of those historic uh, galactic entanglements. What a blessing it is. How can we possibly break the spell of this black magic hijack of the earth and this Saturnian frequency that is, uh, well, well, enveloping the, the earth, so to speak? How, how can people wake up to this when they still believe the mainstream media? They will still be snitching at the neighbors. They will still believe everything the government is telling them. They're captured by fear. Perhaps their pineal gland is calcified and they just, they've been dumbed down by the educational system and of course fluoride and big pharma and what have you. How can they even wake up a little bit to all of the things you've just been saying, Sasha? By hurting enough. When they have chosen to hurt enough, whether they are sitting in a tenement building in, in Moscow or in Johannesburg, if whatever their own predicament is, your story has brought you into the perfect geometry of now. Whoever you are, wherever you are, own that, own it. You are the son and daughter of God. You are manifest in flesh always for a divinely anointed and divinely appointed reason. It is entirely up to you how you take it. But it, the mechanics of disentangling from uh, the cult programming is connected to things like do not pay personal income tax ever, withdraw consent, do not put your black block capital as a name on bits of paper and your wet ink signature if any of those bits of paper are part of a conspiracy against the living. Meaning to say all contracts, all paperwork, all registrations, all of the bullshit that is put in front of us and we are told you are required to sign here, madam, sir. No, I do not consent. I withdraw my contract. I do not pay uh, my, my, uh, my life force into this diabolical orchestration. So each of us, every step of the day of our entire lives, since we were uh, ejected out of the cult programming of school, have been the ones who architected our own plantation slavery, our enslavement. Each of us are responsible, absolutely. There is none of us are a victim, none of us. Every one of our stories is a perfect a geometry of the, the evolution of our soul. But we are the ones who can revoke the contract at the soul level. We can disentangle and we can also begin to architect an entirely new framework of reality. But it's a question of two things in my view to answer your question. Right action and pure truth. You need to enact and embody right action and pure truth. That is your Christed uh, light. That is your navigation system to get the hell out of Hades. That is your navigation system to revoke the contract of the soul covenant and to turn it into something that serves the living over the dead. The government serves the dead. Banks serve the dead. The entire, all of the institutions, the United Nations, NATO, all of this protectionism and defensiveness, all of this uh, strutting of patriarchy in the world is antithetical to our humanness. All we want is to love and be loved. You must conduct right action and pure truth in the living moment in order to manifest the highest outcome. That's the navigation. Mm -hmm. And Ola, you have been um, talking a lot about the Hegelian dial dialectic divide and conquer, what we're seeing at the moment happening. We've seen that for years and years and years. That's how they've all always operated. Splitting and division, the separation of people, the orchestrated war between ordinary people, even on a street level. And of course, as I just mentioned, snitching and telling, reporting on others, which we're seeing happening at the moment. Reactions to a problem, problem, reaction, solution. 
This is the the Hegelian dialectic still. Please uh, talk about the mechanics behind this. First of all, I just want to say, Sasha, I really like what you said about this thing going from being a victim. Because it's like a victim, I used to be a super victim, I was a master victim. Uh, but it, you lose power. It is, you, do, you lose your power. You, are, you become a victim. But if you just change your mindset into becoming you, I am me, I am free, like David Icke said many years ago, you know, take it away and then see it as okay. Like with this technical stuff, we could be a, be a victim. Oh, it's so horrible. We're being attacked. And so, or saying this is a sign of that you're right over target. Incoming fire most of the time is when you're over target. Meaning in my way, the way I see it is like, okay, so I get sabotaged. I get this. I take it as a compliment. Thank you so much. It just shows me I'm on track. So it's like, and then I would say, don't ever try to change anyone else. I mean, ask all the women in the audience. It never works. They've tried with their husbands and their boyfriends forever. I don't think it works. And I think they will agree with me in tears. He will never change. No. So pick the one you want to marry or be together with the way he is and adore them the way he is or she is. The only one you can change is you. And the one you've been waiting for to get off their butt and do something about it is you. So don't wait for the millions to wake up. Don't wait for all oh, the neighbors. I need to tell them. I need to tell them. I need to inform my friends and neighbors and close family, the close family, close friends, spouses. They're the worst. They love you the way you used to be. They don't want you to change. In their point of view, you have turned into some kind of Jehovah's Witness that is knocking on the door trying to kick it in. It does not work. So instead, see if you, if you are so awake and, uh, and aware, then show by example that you can carry this type of information on your shoulders without spreading their agenda. Their agenda is fear, and, and horror and the black, uh, heavy, heavy information that just makes people want to kill themselves. If you spread that, you're doing them a favor. So how can you do it? Turn it around. Get out of the victimhood role. Not a good place to be. I know it gets a, you get a t attention and maybe some empathy, but you're totally powerless. And you get people get fed up in the long run. Instead, turn it around and then see what have I got? What kind of skills or passion or whatever? What gives me goosebumps? And then follow that way and see how, what, how can I help us, not me. This is beyond I, me, mind. Get out of that minefield and get into selfless service. What can I do? How can I, like, do you know, what can I do? I saw this beautiful examples in the US. There was a, a group of, of grandmothers that decided to bake cookies. Okay, and so big deal. No, they were in a very, very difficult situation because the neighborhood was, uh, there was so much crime and violence and police brutality and gangs and everything. So what did they do? They were totally helpless victims. I think not. What they did was they baked cookies and then they approached big, very hard veteran cops that were known for being very brutal and gave, offered them cookies and a glass of milk. And I tell you, these, I heard it from, from one of these grandmothers herself. What, some of these cops almost started crying because that was the first sign of affection and gratitude or just humanity that they'd seen for years. They live in a war zone. They, when they say goodbye every morning, they don't know if they're going to come back. And so they're driven by fear and violence. And that kicks off brutality. That just, and then you have more victims and more victims. And that just keeps on. So, what they did was first they invited the, these cops with, they, they gave them cookies and a glass of milk. And then they went to the gangs and did the same thing. And they were totally like, holy crap. I mean, yesterday I was approached by an AR-15 and now it's like a ginger cookie. And, and th th you know, it's like it shakes them. And that then led to them inviting both sides for cookies and milk. And the conversation started. And then you suddenly it started coming down when people didn't see each other as evil, but they started seeing each other as individuals that was messed up for sure. But that was the 
opportunity to start building a bridge. And this whole thing calmed the situation down a lot in that area. There's another example of, of somebody in an area that was really messed up with a lot of drugs and violence and junkies everywhere and prostitutes. And somebody put a Buddha, made a little temple uh, and a Buddha there, where in the area where there was most of these uh, syringes and, and crashed bottles and whatever, and slowly, slowly, the area just started cleaning up. Because I think drug addicts didn't really feel comfortable in front of Buddha to stand and pump themselves up. You know, These type of things, what can you do? What are you good at? Are you a carpenter? What can you do with that? Are you a baker? Are you a s whatever? And then follow that instead of trying to persuade somebody else that doesn't want to become the leader yourself without trying to lead anyone else. As soon as you start controlling, if you try to control someone else, you, you're on the wrong track, I think. I think that the real leader, the new type of leader, is not somebody that says, I'm the leader. It's just that they walk to the right and people follow them. They walk to the left and there's still people following them, trying to uh, become uh, the owner of the same type of, of human values that that individual is a symbol of. So that is what I would say, like to say. Yeah, and Ola, if you can address what um, the problem reactions solution mechanics there, and I mean, people are fighting each other in um, it, on a massive scale at the moment because of the face masks and because of what is going on in the world and and they're hitting very hard on you know what they call conspiracy theories at the moment with uh, ridicule uh, and 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 defamation so please uh, talk about this separation of of people which is going on uh, at at the moment this is of course a problem reaction uh, solution situation right and you've been speaking about that for so many years you know i spoke to a woman yesterday who used to be at in in marketing and advertisements and she said the basic of all marketing is problem reaction solution i was like what she says that is the basic of all marketing. You find out where something is missing, that's the problem. You agitate it, the problem, to get a reaction from people, and then you serve them the solution. And the solution is whatever you, you want to push on people. You know, so you need to, to activate a problem first to be able to, they've got the product already, so they're looking, how can we make this no, they have the solution already, sorry. But how can we start a problem so that people will see, oh my God, we need that thing. We need, uh, you know, like purple cornflakes with, with whatever. You know, how do you do that? You need to create that thing. So we're the exposed to problem reaction solution everywhere. Everywhere you look, any kind of shop window, any kind of commercial on the news and so on. So it's, there's nothing new. This is just that in this area, the product is fear. And this, uh, what they're trying to sell to us is fear. And their, their solution is the New World Order agenda. So that is not something I would like to get. So how to deal with it? And I would say, when you look at it, when I've started, I mean, I've been digging into this so many years, like you say, and what I found out is that they only have one weapon against us, and it's called fear. Without the fear, they have nothing. So I'm like, hallelujah, baby, this is great news because where is fear? Is it in, behind you? Watch out, Lucas, behind you there's some fear over there. Or behind Sasha there's a square piece of fear in the sofa. I don't think so. What does it look like? What is, I know, I scared you there. So <laughs> is it, can you give some to me? No, because it doesn't exist. So where is fear? I can only say my fear is inside my head, between my ears. That's where fear is. And it's always connected to the future. You're never fearful of the past. You, you might be afraid that it will repeat itself in the future, but the fear is always connected to the future. And it's not even, and it's to something that has not happened yet. So there's nothing real about fear at all. It's a waste of life to be to be fearful. So when people say, what can I do? I say, find ways of letting go of fear. Because when you're fearful, they can force you to do absolute stupid things. Whatever they want, you will just say, yes, sir, bend over, pull down your pants. I say, I surrender. If you become fearless, I'm, I'm not saying it's easy, 
it's shit scary. I mean, join the club. I'm, I'm very afraid sometimes, yet I continue. But the thing is, when you let, the more you let go of fear, and I would also say the more you accept that you might die, which we apparently is all supposed to do in the end. They say, I don't know, but the day I die, I would uh, accept it. But if that's the case, if I'm going to die anyway, why not live and excel yourself and be proud of yourself and just like I did my best. Okay, maybe I failed, maybe I did whatever. I sure did everything I could. And then you can leave this flat or round earth and be proud of yourself the day you're supposed to get wings or go down the drain. I don't know, depending on how you behaved here. But it's like, take the power back, take it back by letting go of fear. We let it go of fear, they are without any power. So, Sasha, we are certainly seeing uh, a separation, well, uh, well, between people and family and friends. And we're also seeing um, the truth community and the truth movement dividing. Is this pandemic a new world order takeover? Or do we trust the plan? Do we trust Donald Trump? Is, does he want to take down the deep state and work behind the scenes with the white hats to take down uh, the new world order and clean, the, drain the swamp. In your opinion, what is really going on? You've been studying this for so many years and you've also uh, been talking a lot about Donald Trump. So, so what is your take on what is going on at the moment? The, the only reason why I talk about Donald Trump is because I have uh, really done the homework there. And by homework, uh, Lucas, I don't mean I've read uh, lots of blog threads and read lots of uh, opinions. What I mean by that is I have studied every single presidential executive order that's come out of that man's wet ink signature, number one. Secondly, I've uh, met members of the family and I've met members, uh, people who are close to him um, uh, and have worked alongside him for over a quarter of a century. And I have spent days at a time with individuals who've had that proximity to the man. And I've done that because I genuinely, genuinely, wanted to understand what is behind this archetype. It is more, and, and every, and what I know from the people who know him personally, love him, is he's incredibly kind, is he's incredibly generous, is he's incredibly blunt, is he's incredibly uh, technicolored. And in my view, maybe even slightly autistic in the way that he speaks and puts together words and sentences, uh, it's not the best syntax you're gonna hear. But I tell you what, he's an incredible orator. I don't know any other speaker, public speaker, who can get up and speak uh, to a rally full of people for three hours unscripted. That takes an incredible amount of quantum intelligence. He also remembers all the names of the people that he has to thank uh, in every city. He's phenomenal, the brain. He's an incredibly intelligent man. I don't believe any of the mainstream media uh, bullshit that comes out uh, on him for obvious reasons. I've studied the executive orders, and that's the main thing I go by. Uh, as somebody who's been involved for many years in trying to expose the uh, human trafficking and child sex abuse, which is the, the, the main uh, source code of the satanic ritual Satanism that is underpinning all of our lives, all of our governments, and all of the superstructure of our lives, I've observed that that man singularly, for whatever reason, has done more to eradicate human trafficking and child sex uh, abuse and pedophilia, institutional, generational pedophilia, than any other man alive that I'm aware of. All of those things stand up. Now, to speak to the broader um, uh, plateau of, uh, of, of reality that we are all of us trying to navigate, I believe that most of us are doing the best we can most of the time. That's what I believe about humans. I believe there's roughly a ratio of, of, of nine to one or 10 to one of good humans and, 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 and fucked up humans. That's my understanding based on my half a century in this world. That is my understanding of social ecology, of the way that we jive together. And it's also my understanding based on having moderated judicial commissions of inquiry into horrible things and hearing hundreds and hundreds of testimonies from victims, from survivors, from members of satanic generational families, for people who've been involved in murder and mayhem, from investigators, from police, from intelligence operatives. I have a tremendous uh, amount of information that I've heard from firsthand. 
And all of it teaches me that we are at the end of a tremendous, long and diabolical uh, a narrative, which is all coming into a bifurcation. This is an alchemical process that's happening at the galactic level and also at the microcosmic level. As Ole said earlier about families breaking up and about relationships being, being pressurized in what's going on. This invocation of COVID and the isolationism and the masking, this is us doing it to ourselves. I've not worn a mask once in six months and there is a, a law, it's mandatory here, okay? I'm not doing it. I'm having a hundred small battles a day or a week, making my case. And each one of us have to have the courage to do that. Uh, when you understand that this, this alchemical bifurcation is designed by us at the oversoul level to cleanse and detox and purify ourselves at the civilizational level, as well as at the social, cultural, familial level and the individual level. This is what's happening. And inc incidentally, without any question of doubt, there is a bioweapon element to this COVID pantomime. Absolutely. And we know that canisters were released in Wuhan, uh, China, in uh, Qom, Iran, in uh, Milan, Italy, and in, in mainland USA. We know that, and possibly elsewhere. But at the same time, a virus is not a bad thing. A virus is a good thing. A virus is an excretion of the cells. It's a deep cellular detox. Once a virus is out of the cellular system, it is a good thing. You cannot catch a virus. It cannot be transmitted from one human to another. And a mask, sure as hell, can do fuck all to stop uh, a virus, a so-called virus. None of that's real. All of that's part of this uh, orchestration by Sabbatean elements. What it's designed to do is to mask ourselves against our reason, against our sanity, against our conscience, and against our consciousness. It's designed to break up families and relationship. Putting little kids into school behind plastic barriers is perversity in extreme. It is the work of Satan. Mm -hmm. Only a satanic mind thinks about trying to segregate little babies from one another in the playground and making them stand apart. Okay, look how absurd these grown up human beings with PhDs are in Congress, in the Senate, elsewhere, who are isolationing and standing uh, 20 foot apart. Look at Joe Biden and Nancy Pelosi's activities. Look at them when they're meeting the public and everyone is standing in little, little circles. This is the work of a Saturnian logic. It defiles and defies all of our humanness by design. That's your black magic right there. Donald Trump, I've not seen him play into any of the satanic Luciferian Sabbatean language, none which is why the man gets my uh, wholesale uh, support. But I just leave with this to remind us that the bifurcation is an alchemical process. It always happens at the end of days. And it is always happening because it is birthing to us the greatest gift that we have evolved into. So the people that you're concerned about, Lucas, in a very gentil way, the way that you speak about those uh, amongst us who are uh, 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 snitching on one another and uh, who are playing into that matrix game, they are on a highway to becoming space dust at the soul level. If you continue to breach your own conscience and your own reason, your own consciousness, you are losing your merit as being an, a human being incarnate, a soul. It's as simple as that. You are the engineer and the architect of where you're taking your soul stream. And you will either move towards the so-called vibral light, the ascensionist paradigm, or you'll become space dust and get back in the queue and come back in 50,000 years time. Either way, there is no right and wrong to that. But no, every one of us must know that this is the line in the sand. We never had an opportunity like this, and it's not gonna happen again. Dream wisely. And interestingly enough, uh, Sasha, we have a question from uh, somebody in the audience who sent this to us, who says, uh, and it's for you, you have been rooting for Donald Trump, but what we are facing is government tyranny, and Trump is also going along with the lockdown and imposing restrictions. 
when will we have the evidence that Trump is actually working for the greater good? It, well, in the first instance, that's, uh, thank you to whoever asked that question. I do appreciate it, but you're entirely incorrect. So what you're doing is you are listening to the mainstream propagandized bullshit. You're not studying again the executive orders with the man's wet ink signature. He's deregulated government in a way that no uh, head of state has ever done in history. To every new statute or regulation ordinance coming onto the government books, uh, something like 20 or 30 are being taken off. So he's decentralizing government and forcing it into dissolution. He is not imposing lockdown. He's doing the very minimum he's required to do to keep bipartisanship uh, on board. And if you're a head of state, if you're the captain of the ship and you've got uh, black and white people, you have to keep both of them more or less uh, away from each other's uh, throats. So you have to, to some extent, play the middle line. But he is not. He is the one flouting masking and not masking. He wore it once in a hospital. And he did that as a basic uh, courtesy to the masking bullshit. Even he knows that you cannot uh, spread a germ uh, when you're walking around a hospital, uh, only in an uh, intensive care unit or in some kind of surgery. You need to be very mindful of these things. But then you've got a very sterilized environment there. Trust me, it is not sterilized here in the Balinese beach or the, the jungles of Southeast Asia where I live. And yet the, the local village warriors are all walking around with masks. This is part of a globalist, Sabbatean, satanic, central command and control coming through the multilateral institutions. The World Health Organization and the World Trade Organization are enforcing this tyranny onto 200 governments around the world. And the IMF, the World Bank, and the Bank of International Settlements is leaning on the reserve banks, the national banks in every corporation government, okay, and forcing them into compliance with these insane laws. Because Mr. Bill Gates, the satanic sociopath, Mr. Anthony Fauci, a satanic sociopath, and a number of others that I could name are the archetypes. These are the Saturnian archetypes who have, they are proxies, front people for the Sabbatean Babylonian priesthood that I've been talking about for nearly 20 years and people like David Icke and Ole have been talking about for a very, very long time. This is very real. But the point is, it is a dominoes of control, command and control. It has nothing to do with uh, Donald Trump. Trump and Putin have been doing everything they can to downsize the overreach of Big Brother, metadata surveillance, all of that kind of thing. I'm not saying he's perfect. I'm not saying Putin's perfect. But I do know which of these strong men have already come together to do a compact to retrieve the world from a generational satanic blood cult, because that is what has been driving the broad agenda for certainly uh, the last 2000 years. So just before I go to Ola, Sasha, so do you think that Trump will try and, let's say, stop Fauci and, and Bill Gates and his vaccination plan? He's already done it. I mean, for God's sake, he withdrew half a billion dollars annual a tariff to the World Health Organization. Come on, people. Stop reading the fucking screen. Stop reading newspapers. Stop listening to MSM. Start listening to Age of Truth. Start dialing into Ole. Start dialing into me. You've got 200 frontline activists out there doing the dirty work for you. The least you can do is pay attention. Stop listening to mainstream media propaganda. It is cult programming, and you're entirely responsible for the bullshit that happens to you if you continue with it. Trump is not participating in that. Fauci has already been hung out to dry. It was only 10 days ago, less, that uh, Trump uh, 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 appointed a new uh, 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 advisor who is now trumped uh, Fauci. Fauci is, no, is a secondary voice now. The reason why... Donald Trump keeps people like Fauci in position is because they, Fauci's been there for 40 years, 40 years. Fauci has got to be holding the seal of office when Trump and the White Hats detonate, okay, the institutions. That is coming up as part of the Jubilee and the reset. I'm not going to talk about Nisara and Gisara, and I am very qualified to talk about that and the global collaterals and the redemption that's coming. Right now, it is about threading a camel through the eye of a needle. P 
Pure truth and right action are the only things that are going to help us perform that miracle collectively. Know who the enemy is. The enemy is not Donald Trump because the, uh, the highly toxic mainstream media have weaponized against him. This is a quadrillion dollar technology. Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, okay? All of the mainstream media, except for one or two channels, have weaponized against that man. That kind of conspiracy against a living man has never happened before in the history of our world. Why do you think it's happening? For a very good reason. Now, if you genuinely care about truth and about disclosure and about any of the questions you're asking, go to whitehouse.gov and study the executive papers that are signed by him. If anyone dares to castigate Vladimir Putin, Go and listen to the actual transcripts of it or read the transcripts of his own speeches. The man is an enlightened human being. I say it happily here. I've studied the man for over 15 years. His, his syntax is perfect. Read what he actually says or go and listen to what he actually says as it's being translated real time. It's incredibly uplifting. And these guys are the ones waging war against the Sabbatean, the invisible hand. And no, they're not acting as double disinfo agents. And Lucas, if you want to talk about the Trump and the Simpsons thing, that is a very interesting meme. But seriously, get into looking glass technology, my friend. Okay? Look at Looking Glass Technology is responsible for a lot of this uh, extraordinary intersecting in timelines. What we know as a human species, based on all of our empirical learning and knowledge over the last 2,000 years, it's brought us to something called quantum mechanics, quantum physics, okay? Please explain to the audience, Sashet, Project Looking Glass. Basically, it is an advanced technology that is able to look in and tamper with past and future to some extent. It's very real. Look, any old witch and warlock in the Middle, e Middle Ages uh, and gypsy in Romania was able to do similar things at different points in our civilizations. Nothing new, okay? We've all, in fact, we've all had the capacity to do these extraordinary things and to bypass time. There's nothing unusual about that, except if you are a very limited, reductive human being who's cult programmed into believing that we are just these very limited creatures, then you're never gonna get it. You're gonna spend 15 years uh, uh, restoring your sanity. But let me make the point. We, we know about quantum physics and quantum mechanics. What, that's the most advanced kind of tip of the sphere of our academia. What have we learned in recent years? That the observer in the scientific laboratory who's observing the experiment determines whether the particle goes to the right or the left. What does that teach us? Depending on if he's looking to the right or the left. So what we direct with the photons coming out of our eyes, our imagination, plasma projection coming from you and me is what manifests reality. We are limitless, ineffable, incredibly creative and expansive beings. Please keep remembering that. Great. And, uh, and Ola, we know from David Icke that he's a bit more skeptical about Donald Trump. And so have you also been. We've, we've discussed that on the show before. But what is your take on Donald Trump at the moment and the whole Q movement? Can we trust the plan in your opinion? And, and is there hope then for the future? Or, or do you think that this is a a so-called New World Order takeover, and he's part of it. I have no idea, absolutely no idea. I, I'm really grateful for people like Sasha who have taken the time to look into these things because I've spent more or less in total four and a half minutes listening to him because uh, when it comes to politicians and on that level, up until now, you don't get there if you're not corrupt. I mean, that's the way the system has been set up. And so, do I even listen to them? Absolutely not. It's a theater play, you know, the whole political system with the right and the left and three parties in the middle. Oh my God, which am I going to choose? Which finger? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I'll take the middle one. It doesn't matter. All of them belongs to me. It's my hand. And this is why nothing changes. So you ask me about Donald Trump. I'm totally the wrong person to ask. At the same time, the way I've seen him, and apparently there seem to be more than one Trump, by the way. There's a, 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 an investigator and uh, 
researcher called Dick Gregory, who died a few years ago, a black uh, former comedian who was a very strong activist. And before he died, he said, there are two Trumps. There's one with a red tie and one with a blue. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. He said one cannot be trusted, the other one can. I have no idea. But what I have seen, though, is like, in my opinion, I wouldn't give too much about that. You know, I wouldn't put too much value in that in this case. It's like, He's, he feels like a joker in the game to me. It's like a diversion. When something is going on that is really important for us to look into, it's like, let's buy Greenland. What? And the whole world looks to the left. Nobody looks over here. When before that, something really interesting going on here, let's build a wall towards Mexico. And by the way, let's the Mexican pay for it. I mean, what? The whole world looks that way. And it's when you look at the way mainstream media is set up, and I just want to say, if you want, if you believe mainstream media, please show me one one channel or newspaper that wrote about Robert Kennedy Jr. being in Berlin doing a historical Ich bin ein Berliner, just like his uncle JFK did in six, August '63. It's historical, just that sentence of him being there. Forget about the 1.3 million that were there a few weeks before or how many thousands that were there. They didn't even mention it. That shows you something. That really, either these journalists suck at what they're doing, which I think they do anyway, but there's a different agenda going on because how can you shut that down? Not even mentioning the small little gathering of I don't know how many thousands of Trafalgar Square where David Icke was, freedom, free, not a word. Not a word. I find that very, very interesting and very telling. So, they, what can I say? I would say can I jump that. In? Can I jump, jump in here? Please do, no, Sasha. No, Ole, I love what you just brought up. Um, I'm very blessed to have some connection with Kennedy. He just opened the World Health Sovereignty Summit that me and my t team produced a few weeks ago and gave an incredible speech for us as well, which we're about to put out in the film that we made in about a week's time. What an incredible human being. And the fact that archetypes like that are, are coming back and being restored, I call this the feminized patriarch, the realized patriarchs are coming back. But uh, as far as uh, uh, the biggest news that's probably happened in recent history should have been Vladimir Putin getting Russia out of the IMF. So that was resounding, historic, unprecedented, the first time in history uh, since the Sabbatean bankers and Templars took over our reality. A super state was removed from slavery, indentureship to the central banks. Donald Trump uh, healing, putting the Federal Reserve into check and decommissioning them and putting them in as the bitch of the, of, of the U.S. Treasury Department. That was historic. Never happened in 100 years. That should have been front page news. Why did he build the Ameri Why is the wall being built? And why did he make a huge story about the wall? That was to cut off the rat lines of human trafficking and pedophilia and gun running and drug running that was hemorrhaging into U the United States and completely eroding and breaking down the fabric, the f family fabric, the, the community fabric and the social fabric of, of mainland USA was under savage attack by Marxist collectivist a Fabianist agendas, bleeding in and heavily financed by the goddamn George Soros's of this world. Why was he looking to buy Greenland? In order to restore energy independence in the USA, to bring it away from dependency on the Middle Eastern oil supply, which has always been owned by the crown of England and the Sabbateans, the, the Bush family, who are not American patriots. These are uh, Chinese patriots. These people, the, the Middle Eastern Gulf Texas mafia who've controlled the global oil and gas supply for the last a century. These are deviants, non-Americans. So every time Trump did something like that, I'm the one to know why that was vital to reclaim the sovereignty and cut off the rat lines to the uh, globalist and transnationalists. Uh, that's the piece I wanted to add. There. And I just thank you, Sasha, for pointing that out because I'm the wrong person to ask. I prefer listening to you. And speaking of George Soros, we have a question for, for Ola uh, from, the aud from somebody in the audience saying, as a researcher of false flag attacks, is the Black Lives Matter protest part of a George Soros funded Antifa agenda? And was that specifically orchestrated during the lockdown as a link to the COVID-19 pandemic? And how is it linked, Ola? 
I know that Black Lives Matter is totally backed by George Soros, that it's totally constructed by him, Antifa the same way. Uh, you will see that uh, it's, the same, it's the same. I love the thing, Do you know, like if you, but also it's not only Soros, I mean, he's just, a, it's a gang of super criminals and he's one of them. We're, ju we're just looking at players at a lower level, but financing these different operations. And I saw the other day, if you write uh, Antifa.com, write that, do a search, boom, it goes straight into JoeBiden.com. It redirects right there. So that, I think, is a pretty interesting little thing. And uh, I mean, I've had Antifa stand outside where I was one of the speakers with, uh, you know, masks and smoke bombs and the whole shebang. But the thing is, they were they were hired. You know, it, uh, when when we went, it was in London. When I went out there, the police said they were they were uh, surrounding the hotel. No, no, you can't go out. You can't go out. It's too dangerous. I said, please let me through. And I just went straight into the crowd with a big smile. And you know, because I know. The, and, and so I looked in the eyes of these um, people with masks on. There, there, it wasn't hatred. It wasn't aggression. Somebody paid them 20 quid to stand there and shout. Do you know, and they were looking at me. Are you somebody I should hate? I, it was that type of thing. So I just went straight through. And, you know, we went to have a, a cold beer afterwards. And the whole thing was just set up. It's a stage thing. And this is one thing I want to say. Whatever it is you see on in media, wherever it is, even if I say it or Sasha or whoever, number one, is it true? Is it true just because someone says it? Is it true just because, well, people say, couldn't the New York Times write something about Trump that isn't true? The answer is, oh, hell yeah. You know, can the Washington Post? Yeah, because these are, these are not, it's like there's a, when you look at the, the, a structure, owner structure behind these, 96% at least of the US uh, media, including publishing houses and radio stations, you name it, are owned by the same people. And if, if they are pissed off with Donald Trump, what do you think they're going to write? Yes, he's a fantastic hero. Let's applaud him to destroy us. I don't think so. It's a war. It's a war, information war. They're trying to destroy their enemies. Why are people like like Sasha, myself, so many other brilliant researchers all over the world, why are none of them led forward? The only time we're led into a TV studio, it's for an ambush. I know the setup. There's always three or four against you. And it's, it's standard procedure. One, they're going to ask you a question, an absolute ambush question that will make you destroy yourself. As soon as you start trying to answer it, you will be attacked. They won't let you even answer. One will be very aggressive saying, how can you say that? I mean, you're talking about that and I'm sure you're against the Holocaust or whatever. That So they will bombard it. The other one will be, there will be a kind one as well saying, but maybe we should listen to him. It's good cop, bad cop. And then there's one just laughing all the time, making the person into you a joke. And that was the end of that person possibly, or you see people like David Icke, who came out of that type of inform, uh, interview and just went through what is called tapas in Rad Yoga. You know, you burn these impurities in yourself. It's so painful. It's horrible, but it's called purifying your mind so that you can stay totally balanced in and in graceful under pressure on total incoming fire. That's how you deal with these type of things. Yeah. Great. And um, we have another question from somebody in, in the audience and maybe for both of you. Uh, see if I can read this. People have done several protests and demonstrations against the lockdown and against the mandatory face masks. But looking at history, very little has changed by protesting and demonstrating. Is it more important now than ever to go out and protest? Or can it actually backfire? I don't know who wants to take that. Well, in the first instance, um, a, a protesting is generally always um, something that is factored into the business model of the status quo. They factor in petitions and protests. So, yes, the cynical aspect uh, answers and says it's a pointless bloody exercise because it's factored into the game. However, um, not paying taxes and going on a protest, now there you're going to start to have an impact. 
You know, we are paying the creature that is devouring us. All governments are, have gone rogue. They are all uh, owned by the parent corporation. This is not um, conspirat conspiratorial talk. All governments on earth are private commercial corporations, registered entities. They are owned essentially by the central bank, and the central bank is owned by the Bank of International Settlements, essentially, which goes back to the U.S. Treasury, the Federal Reserve, then the Bank and Crown of England, and then the Vatican. So there is a central command and control of ownership of your entire structure of governance. When you realize and wake up to that, then you need to go out of your front door, absolutely. You need to bang pots and pans. You need to enact rage. You need to enact your last liberty, which is a constitutional liberty, which is called civil disobedience. Look it up. Denmark, you especially need to do that because you guys are being heavily, heavily targeted and weaponized. You are the first guys who are targeted to fall in Scandinavia. You guys will go down. Norway will go down. Sweden is playing the good cop <laughs> in the way that... Ole was su suggesting there is some bizarre Babylonian game going on. Sweden is no innocent country. Mm -hmm. This is part of a diabolical compact, okay? The principal human trafficking and satanic ritualism is being filtered through Scandinavia to Europe, okay? Check your ports. People, go and knock on the doors of those warehouses and listen for screaming kids. Trust me, it's happening. Civil disobedience is your last stand. You need to enact it now. You don't get another chance to do it. That's my takeaway uh, from this, uh, uh, Lucas. Mm -hmm. But people in Scandinavia, they have a very convenient lifestyle and are pretty lazy, actually. So it's very difficult to, uh, to get people to stand up and take, and, well, take action, do anything, Sasha. By design. Please understand, Australia, Canada, New Zealand and Scandinavia have been designated by the global transnational Sabbatean blood cultists, okay? Let's call them the parent corporation, okay? With 13 executives at the table, okay? The, 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 the premier bloodlines, okay? That they have weaponized you guys in such a way as to give you the privileges of a Western uh, technocracy. And, and so that they can begin to deploy onto you people the protocols of the new world order, the mandatory vaccinations. These things will be coming to you before they get to the rest of us in Botswana, in Guatemala, in uh, uh, Malta and elsewhere. So be clear, you guys are on the front line. And that's why you were fatted up like the fatted calf. That's why you were given special privileges and special uh, uh, amelioration by the, the Norwegian oil fund and other uh, uh, piggy banks that you guys have got. The Australians right now are suffering terribly. I've just finished doing before this broadcast on with some of the leading activists there. We were doing a live broadcast. Tomorrow is the big event, like the Berlin event is supposed to be there. And today the government told them that they're arming the police with assault rifles. Okay. And they're going to come for you at your house before you even go on the street. So they're trying to terrorize the people to stay at home. Okay. You have no idea what's happening in Australia. It is worse than anything the Gestapo were doing in the late 1930s, early 40s. Okay, it is absolute fascism. And it's going to end up with you being forced to take a luciferous oxidative enzyme into your blood. Okay, this is owned, patented by the Gates. And yes, the patent number is 060606. Yes, this is all blood cult, satanic ritualism. They are planning to inject you with an oxidative enzyme called luciferous. It's patented. Okay, we know all about this stuff. Check it out. Wake up. Civil disobedience. Do not comply. No contract. Get stuffed. Get angry. I mean, we've heard Bill Gates say this year that nothing will get back to normal until people will get this forced mandatory vaccine. So how can people say no if they're not allowed to travel or go anywhere or even... Uh, have a job anymore, Sasha. By the taxes, by suspend all the contract with the government, because the government has now turned into treason. It is now a technology that is waging war against you. Please remember, the government was put into place, engineered, ostensibly, the government was created in order to serve the people. These are your servants. 
Okay, you pay their pensions and their godless salaries. Remember that. Talk to each other. Put down the beer. Put down the booze. Put down the drugs. Get together. Embrace each other. Get onto the streets. Screw the provisions, the statutes, the rules, and the regulations. They don't serve the living. They serve the dead. Get angry. Don't pay taxes. Stop paying all taxes. Not business. Business continue with that. Personal income tax, stop all taxes. Pay no, and you know what? Get the names and addresses and phone and faces of these officials, these officers, these traffic wardens, these warrant officers, these arresting sergeants, all of them. Use your telephones, make them famous. Use social media, get their names, publish their names and their faces, name and shame, name and shame. This is, this is all about perception. It's psychological warfare. Remember, there's 99 of you. No, 999 of you to every one of these costume goons. I'm not waging war against police. There are some good police out there. I know that. Believe me, I've interviewed a number. But they are incredibly few. I have police phoning me from Australia, speaking to me, giving me information so that I can help the activists against the police because they're good police. There are good guys in the military industrial complex, good guys in academia, good guys in the United Nations and in the BIS. They are all, these people need us on the outside to move against the castle because they cannot do it from the inside. Uh, so please remember that at all times. There's a lot of good people in costume, but the overwhelming majority are mindless drones. They are low IQ. They've been selected for that purpose. They've been culturally engineered to not ask questions. To, to not have too much of a conscience. Because if you are going to go and penalize a pregnant woman and drag her out of her house and vaccinate her, you are a Satanist. You've lost your conscience. You've already compacted to Faust and to the devil. You're beyond help. But we are the ones permissioning it. And you Danish men, brothers, fathers, stand up. This is your time. This is your time to shine. This is why you migrated your soul from God knows where to this world. Remember who you are for the love of Christ. I think actually you said everything there, Sasha. And we have, interestingly enough, uh, a question uh, from a Danish man here. And I guess we'll, we'll, we'll go to Ola for this one. And it's a long question. It's a little story, but I'll try and read this. He says, for a long time, I didn't want to wear a face mask and made it my business to make a stand not to wear one in public, uh, on public transportation. I was harassed and shouted at by several people and someone was uh, snitching on me call, uh, and called the train conductor. When I said that I had health issues, he didn't believe me and wanted to give me a fine. When I refused to give him my personal information and beg him to believe my reasons for not wearing a mask, he called the police who was conveniently present at the next station where the train stopped. After the police ordered me to put on the mask, I had to do it. They even gave me a mask. Now I feel like I have gotten the mark of the beast. How is it possible to resist wearing a mask in the future if you will be stopped and taken by the police? It's a pedestrian. I'm sorry. It's not about how the, the question is about you and your own relationship with yourself. And until you've resolved that, you are giving in to fear over love, fear over consciousness. So don't don't bandy about this. I am a frontline activist. I've been shot at. I've been poisoned. I've had horrible things happen to me on five occasions. I should have been dead. OK, I've had goons sent to hurt me very badly. OK, every time one of those incidents has happened over the last 21 years in my life, I have seen how the Christed light comes to you, how the protection is intrinsic. It's inside of you. And I know by the grace of God, it's only there in me because I'm that stupid that I keep like Ole putting myself in the flame. It hurts like hell. I'm afraid as well. I used to have cold sweats and fevers before doing certain things, putting myself out. But you have to do it because it's right action and because we're born to act in truth. That is the only way that our soul is validated in this veil of tears. So it's a question, my dear friend, who asks that question, what to do? You breached your own conscience. 
The policeman, you should have simply taken his name and his badge number. You should have allowed yourself to be put into uh, manacles and taken down to the station. Do the stupid paperwork. Do not consent. Not one step of the way. Do not sign the form they put in front of you. When that a, a warden was saying, sign here for the fine and we'll let you go on your way, they wanted the contract. They wanted to discharge that against your birth bond and make money there as well through the Treasury Department. You have no idea how this evil alchemy is being con conducted by your name, your block capital, your letters, your signature on bits of paper. Stop entering the contract. The policeman is a human being, invariably a, an afraid human being with a bleeding heart and a skid mark in his underpants. For God's sake, talk to these people like humans. Brother, what are you doing? I've done this as I've been molested. I've looked into the eyes of my molester and said, remember your grandmother. That's what I said the last time I was harmed. I said, remember your grandmother. The man walked out, let me go and walked away because that's the one thing that touched him. There's always a way if you're in your truth, it'll come to you, but deal with each of these little petty battles in honor, but never enter the contract. That's the only answer I can give you because that's the only one that invokes right action and pure truth. Yeah, and Ola, if you will address it. Thank you. I know in the, in the revolution in Iran, there were uh, the soldiers were very, very brutal to the population. I mean, they in the end, they sent out the Shah sent out tanks and helicopters and they started firing into the masses. And so I mean, horrible, horrible. And this is a power game. So it had people armed themselves, you would have a civil war. But they didn't have guns, so what could they do? And one of the things that, the, especially the women, the older women, they went out with mirrors and they held them up, you know, against the soldiers so that the soldiers could see themselves saying, really, my son, is this really something? Are you proud of yourself right now? I mean, bash my head in, I'm an old woman, not a problem. But really, while doing it, have a look at yourself. Is this why you came to this world? And many soldiers, changed sides. They started crying, they broke down, They this whole thing, you know. All, so just like Sasha said, I would say, who, who are you betraying? You're betraying yourself, you're betraying your soul in certain situations. So the, the game is big, the stake is high, you know. And so I would say also, if you look at Nelson Mandela or, or Mahatma Gandhi, where did they spend a lot of time? In jail. Prison. In jail, they went prison, you know, and they purified themselves there so that they came out with a lot of experience on how not to do or how not to be or whatever for the future generations. But they they went they took the consequences. And I say absolutely no way go into violence. No way, because that's wow. their game. They will use it against you. And that's also why they send in provocateurs and all these type of crap individuals that looks like us, but they're not. You can always try. They are often they have very good shoes on, boots, because they, they know they have to, you know, many of them, former military or whatever they are. And they, they know that they're going to stand still maybe for hours. So check out the shoes. Uh, and you will see that it, everything is peaceful. Suddenly there's a Molotov cocktail or a brick coming flying in right in the head of some police officer. They want you like that. They want you to gather in big parts and then get the, the, get the steam up, you know, pump it up, the aggression. And then the only thing they have to do is throw in a little spark, boom, off it goes. And then they can say, oh, look at these uh, anarchists or wild people. We have to control them for your security. And then boom, game over. So I say go the Gandhi way instead. That was not a worse way of dealing with stuff. Neither was Jesus. He was he stood up for kindness and goodness and love. What did they do? They nailed him to a cross, apparently. I mean, it it is not without risk, just like uh, Sasha. I have a life that uh, has been very spicy at times. You know, there's been a lot of uh, I've been blessed with quite a few traumas, which has helped me also to get empathetic with people in similar situations. So it's from being a victim, turning it around the scene, thank you, thank you for putting me through absolute hell. Now I understand it. Now I understand pain. I understand oppression. I understand torture. I understand abuse. I understand sexual attacks. Thank you. 
Now I can do something about it. And what to do about it is peaceful, but very powerful. And the thing is, the only thing you have to do is not comply. Just say uh, thank you, but no thank you. And and they always want to try you to get you into these contracts. You know, could you please follow me? Can you please come into the apps? Thank you. That's very kind of you. No, thank you. Or get into this little room. We will just beat the living crap of you. But don't worry. We are very nicely dressed and we look uh, civilized. Thank you, but no thank you. And then whatever, you can't control the situation. You can only control yourself. And one of the things that I do when I get approached, it's happened a few times when I've been approached by very violent people, uh, you know, in uniforms uh, that would, that have been informed that I was the enemy. You know, the thing is, I don't hold it against them. In their world, they've been pumped. This is the target. This is what he looks like. Destroy him. Okay, fine. That's his order. He's serving his family or friend, whatever. You know, he doesn't know. So what I try to do when I get attacked by people like that is to turn down the volume so I don't hear what they're saying or screaming. Because if you go into a dialogue, at least I am not very good with words in situations like that. I turn down the volume. I stay quiet. I keep my arms totally down, relaxed, not aggressive in any way or form. If you make like a, a stance, uh, like a martial arts stance or whatever, you are lost. You will get a baton, boom, stuffed off your butt or whatever. You will go down. But if you st stand totally defenseless, but in power and balance, and what I do is, since my brain can only think one thought at a time, it cannot be, and it's the same with emotion, I cannot be both happy and, and very afraid at the same time. So there is a choice there. So what I try to do is keep my mind occupied so I don't go into fear or hatred or anger. So the thing that, that works for me is I look at this person and I keep repeating the word divine, 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 divine. He's somebody's brother. He's somebody's son. Divine, divine. He does not know what he do. Divine, bless him, bless him, bless him. And, and that keeps me. I'm not saying I'm any kind of saint. I'm just saying this is what helps me keep my mind in balance in these situations. Because if I get into fear mode, I'm lost. I, I'm, I have nothing. I mean, they've got muscles the size of Mount Everest. I have got nothing, you know. So what can I do? I can only stand in my truth and not. And the beauty, what happens, I don't know how it happens, but what I look for in these very black eyes, they're very, always very black when they're that angry or hateful or whatever, is look for the divine spark and just keep focusing on it. Just show it to me, show it to me. And and what happens is that, or what has happened the few times that I've been in this situation is that this person who was fully armed and with whatever, you know, armor and guns or whatever, they suddenly, there's this doubt thing. And then you have like a second of, of what looks like fear in their eyes because they're like, what's up with this guy? Why is he not afraid? Why doesn't he understand how powerful I am? Why doesn't he because I'm not buying into his language, the control or, or uh, yeah, whatever. And then from, from wanting to beat my head in, you have this second of fear, and then that's where suddenly, boom, you see the spark of life. It's like a tiny little explosion. It's the most beautiful thing, I tell you. It's the most beautiful thing. And I know at that point, I totally hope that I messed up his career forever because there was a crack in that armor and there was a seed coming in of doubt. What am I doing? Why? There's something wrong, you know? And then it turns towards, they start looking into, and both times, about 10, 15 minutes later, I've been sitting down with that officer who wanted to bash my head in, and we'd had a nice conversation. They said, you know, they we're talking about their situation at home, and my, my wife doesn't like me having bulletproof underpants on or whatever, you know, that whole type of thing. And both of them gave me their private uh, uh, business cards. You know, if you need any help, just call me. Here's my private number. That is miraculous, I would say. It's against all odds. And yet again, not. Because love is conquers fear. Love, the power of love is so, it's, I can't say how much bigger it is when it comes to what, what they stand for, which is control and fear and that, it's so low, 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 low. So 
it's in our mind. That's where the, the, the battle should be fought. I'm, you know, I went to a peace demonstration many years ago because I thought I'm going to change the world. What I found myself in, it sounded like a lynching party. Peace, peace, peace. Do you know, I was like, what the heck? There's a lot of aggression going on here. So I've, I've never gone to any demonstrations or protests. You know, what I say, instead of anti, uh, anti-violent or anti, what I'm going to say, pro instead, anti-mass, go pro br- free breath, you know, pro blue skies instead of anti chemtrails, and then see if you can, because it's a matter of energy, turn it around and turn it into something good and powerful. And it makes it so much harder for them to fight you like that, because you, you don't even go into the same arena. You just bypass it. So we also had a question, and I don't have it right here, but it was about 5G. And what is happening here in Denmark is that in three days, on the 7th of September 2020, 5G will be rolled out nationally all over the country, supposedly. And I don't know whether it's been rolled out in Spain or in Bali or anywhere else in the world in the same way, but the electromagnetic radiation coming from these 5G frequencies could trigger these natural viruses and exosomes in our bodies, which they say will get people to test positive for coronavirus, COVID-19, so that they can... um, so that they can justify a new so-called outbreak and um, possibly a new lockdown and more restrictions. And every mention of 5G in connection to COVID-19 is, of course, heavily censored. I think we've all, all experienced that, certainly. But please address this. I don't exactly know what that question was, but how can people protect themselves from 5G radiation? Now it's being rolled out. What can they do? How can we stop this rollout? Sasha, you've done a great film about this. Yeah, so I recommend if anyone wants to learn about it, <clears throat> uh, do do check out the film that I made uh, about a year and a half ago, um, which predicted everything that's happening, absolutely. Um, it's called 5G Apocalypse, the Extinction Event. It's uh, freely available out there. I think it's been pulled down, but it's been seen by many, many millions of people. And it's, uh, it's threatened governments, it's threatened the infrastructure. Uh, BBC came out and did major globally syndicated hit pieces on me uh, recently uh, through the World Service, um, having entrapped me into uh, talking about public health and safety. Uh, Ole, that's how they brought me in. I said, I don't trust you guys. I don't want anything to do with you. Oh, no, we just want your expert opinion on public health and safety. So I, I recorded it. They're facing a major defamation lawsuit Right now, they were served with papers five uh, days ago, and I'll have some fun talking about that in the days ahead. Um, if you want a technology, I've been involved in the um, what observing the double-blind placebo clinical studies in Switzerland, Belgium, France, and Germany over the last uh, eight, nine months on a technology that I know absolutely works and remediates all the 5G threat, and that's 5G BioShield dot. Anyone's interested? It's a serious matter. 5G. I'm the only thing I've ever promoted in my life is this. I don't promote things. I don't solicit for anything ever. I don't accept money for speaking, for traveling. I always travel my own on my own ticket. I never accept money. I've been offered a lot of money. I don't accept coin. But this I will promote like a whore because 5G is serious. And I know the science behind this and I know it works. So 5G BioShield. Dot com is the technology. Try not to believe any of the shit that's out there on the web. They've been trying to smear this technology for the last four or five months since the end of May, desperately. Okay, it works every time. It changes your life. Um, I, the, on the other side, I want to say something. So we know that 5G is a weaponized frequency that will be able to dial in to the isotope frequency of anything. We know it will be able to give you a heart attack in your home if it's deployed in the way that it's intended. We know it's, it's a sound weapon it's in the same way that they're deploying these stealth weapons like sonic weapons. It has that capacity. Once it goes live with the 40 odd thousand satellites courtesy of the sociopath uh, Elon Musk and these other criminal enterprises, when it goes global, you can be on the top of the Himalayas or under the ocean in the Indian Ocean 
it will still be able to track you and see you, okay, and dial into you, to your DNA resonant frequency. It's absolute full spectrum weaponized frequency. Mark Steele is the weapons expert that I am uh, listen to the most, but I've spoken to countless. I've spoken to a world leading scientist, epidemiologist, and so on. We know the effect of 5G is a direct assault against, listen to this, the reason why your governments tell you, no, we've done the tests, it's safe, is because they've done tests on human DNA. And the human DNA more or less gets through the test without too much destruction. But let me remind you, you are only 1% human at the DNA level in your body when you do a test. Most of the cellular DNA in your body, 99% of the cellular DNA in your body is microbial cellular DNA. That's the operating system of the human body. That's the operating system of all life systems, trees, plants, oceans, the biome of the air, the biome of the water, the biome of the soil is interrelated microbial cellular DNA. That is the DNA that gets destroyed, melted by 5G. So the human will, it will live just about, if you're lucky, you'll die of some cancer or some disease, but the point is the microbial DNA will be destroyed. The operating uh, software of all uh, systems will be under attack. That's the problem. So your governments are that stupid, they didn't do the test properly. But your governments are designed to be stupid. They're not designed to give a goddamn fig about human public health and safety. Look what they're doing right now. Getting five plus billion people to mask themselves and deplete 20% of the oxygen intake to the human technology. Do you know what that does? Over six months, takes you 20% closer to the grave, my friends. 20% destruction of your, your immune system because you are depleting 20% oxygen or 15% oxygen. That's what it does. Same thing as social isolating, quarantining, separating humans from humans. We did these experiments on goddamn rats and monkeys 50, 60 years ago. They go mad. They go mad. They commit suicide. They die. The body shrivels up. Human to love and be loved. Don't ever forget that. 5G is a problem. The only thing I will say, Lucas, to end my little rant on 5G is that I do believe that Trump and the Pentagon and Putin and other good leaders have already conspired to override the weaponized frequency set. I believe that they're trying to get the $15 trillion infrastructure financed by the private sector. And then once that is in place, before it goes global and live, I do believe they're going to downsize uh, from 60 hertz to 432 hertz, so-called Tesla frequencies. I think there's a very good argument that that's going to happen. And if you, again, study some of the executive orders from Trump, it looks as though he began this a few months ago, setting into place the provisions for the U.S. military or the Pentagon to step in. And that's why they've thrown Huawei, China, out of England and out of America. That's why Australia is so weaponized right now. They're in bed with that, that, that company. So there's a lot of internecine wars going on with the corporatocracy and the deep state and the governments proper. It's a complex subject. Right now, you need to take care of yourself and your family and protect yourselves where you can. So do you think, Sasha, that, um, that Trump actually will... Um prevent uh, the supposed plan from Bill, Bill Gates' vaccination plan and the Elon Musk uh, smart grid plan to, to connect the human mind and brain to AI, artificial intelligence uh, through these vaccinations that include um, uh, nanotechnology and microchips. And that is, in fact, the real agenda behind that. Can that be stopped before people start getting these vaccines? Uh, well, yes and no. I'm sorry to answer in that way, but that's the truth of the matter. No, in smaller areas, in smaller, more weaponized uh, zones, you're going to find that these stupid governments and their military machinery, and they never give a damn about law, about natural law, about the Nuremberg principles, about Geneva Convention. They don't give a damn about uh, a, a natural, any form of, of law. They are just weaponized governments. In, in dip, I'm not going to name countries, but there are sm certain small island states and certain countries. Denmark is one of them, incidentally, which is very, very dangerously close to being forced into mandatory vaccinations. 
that is almost certainly going to start to happen in certain hot spots around the world if the globalists get their way. If Trump comes back into power, which I believe he will with a monster landslide, I believe he has to first get back in. And in the first quarter of next year, I think you'll see a complete takedown of the entire globalist agenda as it relates to the weaponized public health administration sector. He's already withdrawn half a billion dollars a year from the, uh, from the World Health Organization. That was a, sorry, half a billion. Uh, however, however much it was, I can't remember. Half a, I can't, I think it was half a billion dollars. I may have been wrong earlier. Either which way, the World Health Organization, the United Nations, the Center for Disease Control, the American Medical Association, the FDA, all of these agencies that are diabolical agencies, and they've got their little brother and sister agencies all around the world, like in Copenhagen. They are all now under some form of catastrophic failure. That's the good news. But it's really, and that's why this weaponization of media against uh, Trump in particular right now is so intense. Everything that they're doing. This morning we woke up to find Theresa May, the former pr Prime Minister of England, and Boris Johnson, the incumbent Prime Minister, and Nancy Pelosi, the leader of the, the, the uh, Speaker of the House of uh, 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 Congress in the United States, and uh, Joe Biden, and all of these uh, puppets, they all came out syndicated today with a Twitter, each of them. And the Twitter was basically saying Donald Trump is responsible because his best friend Vladimir Putin allowed for his opposition leader to be poisoned. That's the news today. So they're basically trying all, it's, it's, it's a, this is a strategic warfare, trying to take down Trump any which way they can. They are desperate, desperate. They've run, run out of solutions. Russiagate failed. It's all failed. They are absolutely desperate. Trump needs to get in, Lucas. The minute he gets in, he takes out the United Nations is over. It is all but over. The crown of England, the, the criminal element of the corporate crown of England is over. Over. It's already over. Okay, the Bank of England, the Federal Reserve and the Vatican Bank and the Vatican complex is also over. But it's going to take at least three to four years to fully demolish that Sabbatean infrastructure that is the utility of the parent corporation. Then you've exposed the, the generational imperial hegemony by these uh, Babylonian priests will be fully exposed in the next 36 to 40 months. And God knows we're heading towards an incredible emancipated world. In my view, it's all good. But we can, we, can ameliorate, we can mitigate the pain that we are feeling individually and within our families and our communities. The more we stand in that light that uh, Ole and I keep referring to, the truth of who you are in the now. And the more we can do that, the sooner we can, we can mitigate the pain that we're going to feel. Otherwise, we can dispense a bit more pain to ourselves over the next one, two, three, four uh, years, in my view. But Ola, um, well, activism is the theme of this Awaken Weekend Denmark conference. So what, in your opinion, can people do right now? What can they do in the future and for the future? What is your best advice for people in the situation we are in at the moment here in the beginning of September 2020? I think on most remote controls there's a red button. It's normally round and it says off. When you press that one, you will might you might experience some withdrawal and some shaking nervous uh, tweet, uh, tweets whatever for a few days but after that you will have this strange feeling of feeling better and it's uh the thing is nowadays mainstream media is like a sewage opening right into your home into your head into the head of your children and your loved ones turn it off don't trust me look at the ownership look at who's behind these things and it's like uh, let's put it like that, Al Capone or, or Jeffrey Dahmer, this uh, infamous serial killer, if he had purchased a new network, would you trust the type of news that was coming out there? Would you, you, would you let your life be controlled of J Jeffrey Dahmer? But here 
we're looking at criminals that are way worse than these people, way worse. And then we say, well, it was on their screen, so it must be true. I beg to differ. I really beg, beg to differ. Turn it off. Turn it off. Okay, that's step number one. Take the power back. Let go of fear. Purify your mind. Start doing selfless service for people around you. See what you what can I do for my friends, my family, my community, my country, my world. Get over this whole thing with borders. We are all in the same boat. We're all going down or up. And I must say, a beautiful country like Denmark. I was born in this country. It was famous for being a loving, fun-loving country. I mean, there are even like little hearts on the street signs. I love it. They have a beautiful sense of humor. What the hell has happened? I mean, my God. And being, is it 17 years now that Denmark has been at war through NATO, this terror tool of the world? I mean, shame on us or all of us who joins into that and also who pays taxes that supports this. Uh, I mean, you show me a just war. Show me one war in modern times that have been built on something that has to do with right or wrong. No, it's all desires from these creeps that are, they say they are at the top of the pyramid. What they forget to tell you is that the pyramid is turned downwards. They're the bottom of the bottom of the bottom of the bottom of crap. I mean, when it comes to human quality, I, I don't even want to, I don't know what to say. So then look at networks like the Bilderberg Group, the Tire Lastel Commission. There's so much information, the Club of Rome, the Skull of Bones, all of these networks, the Freemasonic Network. Look, just like Sasha said, identify them identify them, start mapping them, and then put them personally responsible for the papers they have signed. You know, I know Chip Tatum, a CIA whistleblower, who was the, he was the hitman for George Bush Sr. He, uh, he, he was the commander of Pegasus. They took out at least 14 people on the orders of George Bush Sr. He has been all over the place. What he did, he, he, after he became a whistleblower, he has put a lot of effort into trying to help veterans because they're being treated like absolute crap and, and let down after trying to, uh, you know, go out in the world and, and give their life or arms or legs or whatever for patriotism, whatever you call it, finding out that there is no so, such thing as patriotism. It's big business and they are the enforcers of it. Anyway, so what he, what he do, has done in, I think, in Washington and New York, I think in LA as well, what they did was they found out the exact people that were signing the orders for these soldiers to be sent into action. That never their own children, it's never their families, never. It's often from minorities, poor people. These are the ones that are getting sent. It's, they're called cannon fodder by charming individuals like Henry Kissinger or other massive war criminals like that. Okay, make them personally uh, responsible for what. And what they did, what Chip and his buddies did, was they found out that was the person who signed this order that has killed so many people th anonymously. They, they are not there saying, I take full responsibility. I sent that battalion in. It got totally massacred. I stand up for that. No, 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 no. Behind closed doors, they signed these papers. So what they did was they went to the kindergarten of children to these people and just with big, uh, uh, you know, what do you call it, uh, uh, posters and just and also shouting, um, Joe Fraser is a killer. Joe Fraser is a killer. Do you know this stuff? And people are like, how can you do that to children? And like Chip said, moral or not moral, that child would get over it. But this has to stop. So how can you get to these individuals? In this case, through the, through the children. Whatever works, this madness has to stop. And there's so many children. We say, oh, that poor child of a mass murdering signing individual in a nice suit and a BMW. That person can go into therapy, okay, and see who was my dad, who was my mom. Okay, fine, deal with it. We all have to do that. But there's so many other children, while we are not doing it, they're suffering, caged and tortured and killed. And, and I mean, we can't even imagine what's going on. We're just sitting around eating pizza while it's happening. It's like, wake me up. Am I in Alice of Wonderland? What the hell has happened to us? So. I'm not a promoter of standing up and throwing rocks, absolutely not. I'm a promoter of standing up and saying enough 
this is enough. Stop it. Stop the madness and heal this world with love the way it's supposed to be. We are all responsible. Stop it. Stop it. I, I feel sometimes like I have a, a brain meltdown when I look upon the passivity, pass, what do you call it, passivity, passivity of okay. people. It's like people are like, well, my child, my, the teacher spoke uh, really, uh, you know, rude to my child. I need to go to the local authorities and sign whatever, you know, and I'm going to stand up. How about focusing on something of importance, you know? All of these thousands and thousands and thousands of, of teenagers and young children just disappearing. And we don't even look. We even know the different castles they're in. We may know many of the areas. We know the tunnel system. We know the people involved. We know, we know it all. And still we let it go on. Great. And, and, oh, and I can just say about 5G. You asked about 5G before. Oh. They, the people that are trying to force this upon them, or people or whatever they are, are so few. They are so few. They are in the thousands, I believe, globally. We are billions. We are billions. It's like, oh God, it's, oh, if you're on a beach, you're on a sandy beach. This was what a mathematician told me. We are the whole beach of white sand. If you pick up one grain of sand, that's them. That's the, why are we even in this situation? It's a joke. It's an absolute joke. And we have to take a lot of responsibility for being so lame and such cowards and so asleep, I would say not asleep, but choosing to focus on something of less importance than the wealth, caring and being of, of the children and, and the population of the innocent countries that are being bombed the shit out because of some psychopaths that want even more to fill up this empty black hole inside of them that will never get filled anyway. Ugh. Great. Okay. And Sasha, your final thoughts on activism. What can people do right now and also in the future? Uh, I'll keep mine simple. It's uh, um, recognize that each of us uh, have been cult programmed um, generationally. Uh, recognize that uh, the vast majority, possibly 99% of everything you think you know, you do not know. And begin to activate the wisdom flame. Um, begin to learn the art of insecurity. Recognize that the wisdom of insecurity will teach you a great deal. So don't be afraid to begin to alienate yourself from members of the family and friends and circles and your local community and your society at large. Because if they are all drone slaves, wage slaves, and they're enjoying this uh, uh, tiptoe toward the uh, uh, diabolical uh, 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 some diabolical matrix reality. This is their choice. You need to follow your own dictate of your own conscience. And if that means alienating yourself from family and friends, so be it. Pure truth is the only thing that matters here. I would say that the easiest way to reverse the cult programming is to recognize that there has been a complete dislocation between you and the soil, between you and trees and clouds, nature. We've discussed relationship with each other, how this is constantly being culturally and socially engineered to destroy relationship. We've just spoken about this. But there is a greater relationship that exists, which is between you and the living soil. So recognize that the more you can get back to communion with the living soil and with the trees and with the oceans, with the clouds, with the skies, with the sun, moon and stars, then this is, this is the way we, each of us can begin this reverse programming right now. I go on the balcony here, I look at the ocean, I look at the frangipani trees every day, I breathe in the fractality of nature and I remember that I am a poet above all things in this world. I'm born, I'm born to, 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 to sing, to write, to dance, to engage art and beauty and consciousness. And I do this with my life and I make sure that I balance and measure my life with art and beauty and consciousness. On the other hand, I also learn the art of irreverence. I despise authority. I have no respect for the dead fiction of government or the church, the state or the crown. It is a godless construct built only for the dead and for the blood cult. I will have no part of it in me. I carry with me the universal flame. I know this. I only live to see the end of all government. And I will in my time.
It'll happen in my time. I was born to it. We were all born to it. We will absolutely see the systemic dissolution of this mind control technology, the cult programming technology, the ritual harvest of humanity, the sacrifice of innocence, the blood, the rivers, the oceans of blood that have been lit with babies, young people, and old people, all of us. We have all been subjected to the blood cult. That is what war is. That is what disease is. That is what poverty is. And war, disease, and poverty are the issue of governments. Only. That's the only thing you get. All banks are governments. All bankers are priests. They are all the same archetype. It is time for us to revoke the contract with the intercessionary. Step back. Salute the mentor, the former teacher, the priest, the satanist, the diabolical. Salute it. Thank you for the journey. Contract is over. Withdraw. Remember who you are at all times and use the alphabet of the human heart in all that you do. Even when you are roaring like a lion and raging against the machine, use the alphabet of the human heart, which is to say, be kind to yourself and to each other. Remarkable speech there, Sasha. And just before we end, Please uh, tell people how they can find out more about you, uh, your website and contact information, Sasha. Thank you. I love you, Lucas. I'm not doing it because I don't want any following. I'm thinking of going off social media soon. I'm really thinking about it hard. I'm done. I'm not trying to get, uh, I'm not soliciting, making money. I'm not looking for followers. I'm done. I want to get back to art, beauty, and consciousness myself as the living man. But I want to bring about the end, the auto-destruct of this fucking thing called government first. And my focus is on that. There's websites out there. The one that I want people to be aware of right now is the World Health Sovereignty Summit that we just put on and produced, which is uh, reclaimyourlives.com. And anyone who wants remediation from 5G, guaranteed, you will have total full protection on your home and your, your family, 5gbioshield.com. All the rest of my websites are all out. There's too many to remember. Free films uh, that I've got and the, the good interviews with people like Ole, in interviews that can really inform people, that's all put into sashastone.com. And, and that's a free resource. But that's it. Uh, all the other organizations, I'm kind of stepping back. Okay, great. That's that's wonderful. And Ole, your uh, your website and contact information and final thoughts. You sometimes end with a little song for us, don't you? <laughs> oh, the song, the song. Uh, my website is light on conspiracies because that is exactly what I try to do. Aim the light into the belly of the beast, into the darkest of the dark, and then bring back information that can be of uh, value to the tribe, the human tribe. I, I would like to say that, you know, the way out of this is to take the longest journey that there is from the mind to the heart and turn the volume down inside your head and then start listening to your heart because your heart knows what is right and your heart knows what is wrong. It's very, very simple. You got this in a GPS, so start following it. And uh, you asked for the song. I wanted to do a prayer. I, I will do both. I will be. <laughs> so, okay, the first one is the prayer. It goes like this. May the entire universe be filled with peace and joy, love and light. May everyone, and especially the ones who heard us, be filled with peace and joy, love and light. May the light of truth overcome all darkness. So victory to that light. And then the song, which the first time I sang that, it was Sen Gardner and I who was just sitting jamming and, and we came up with this whole thing. It was at the Open Mind. Then I sang it in, in Dallas as well. I was there. And now it seems to have spread with another lyrics. I don't know if it's combined, but anyway, it goes like this. We're so tired of the bullshit. Yes, we are. We're so tired of the bullshit. Yes, we are. We're so tired of the bullshit. Tired of the bullshit. We're so tired of the bullshit. We are. Chapter two, oh, verse two, we're so tired, it just goes on and on. We're tired, we've had enough. Do you know, I say, let's save the world and kick back with a cold beer and then it's gonna be super exciting times because then it's up to us to see, okay, now we got the bad boys out of this equation. 
What can we do? How can we create this beautiful, beautiful world if that is what we choose to do? How can we help Mother Earth get back in balance and all of that? I mean, I cannot wait to get this madness over and done with and then focus on things that is of real importance. Great. I think I speak on behalf of all of the people at the Awaken Weekend Denmark Conference and also the viewers here at Age of Truth TV when I say that it's been absolutely wonderful and extraordinary to have you two remarkable gentlemen here with us today with all of your fascinating insights and your knowledge. So many years you've put in so much work and you're doing so, so many great, great things. And I want to thank you both very much for doing this interview and this debate for the conference. Thank you, Sasha Stone. Thank you, Ole Damagard. And have a wonderful day and let's work for the truth in the future. Thank you. That's what I say. Thank you, Lucas. Thank you, Ole. Love you guys. Thank you. Thank you very much to Sasha Stone and to Ola Damagard and all of the people attending the Awaken Weekend Denmark Conference. And thanks to all of you, our viewers at Age of Truth TV, for watching. You can support us by clicking onto our website, ageoftruth.tv. You can sign up for our newsletter on our website as well. And please like our videos, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell for notifications. Your support is greatly appreciated. On behalf of the Age of Truth TV team, we thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you again soon.